Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. Brian Winnikins at the NAFB convention. Thank you to our sponsors, including Alcivia Co-op, Annabas Silo, Animal Wellness Center of Buffalo Valley, Compere Financial, Osteoplastics, Synergy Co-op, the Wisconsin Farmers Union, Wisconsin Corn Growers Association, and also the Wisconsin Soybean Marketing Board. And joining us uh, right now, Corey Rosenbush, President and CEO of the Fertilizer Institute, as we'll talk about some of the things going on with uh, them. And uh, I guess, Corey, first, let's talk about those fertilizer markets. A lot of volatility in the markets. Is there some light at the end of the tunnel? And hopefully it's not a train? <laughs> we hope so. It has been a volatile ride the last couple of years. Matter of fact, we just finished our industry trends research, and it was clearly issue number one on everyone's mind in the industry. I think we started to see the landing in 2023, early this year. Uh, fortunately, I think most people survived it. I think there was a lot of concern that some of the retailers setting on really high-priced inventory from last year were going to take a bit of a hit, but most seemed to weather that storm well. Uh, just was talking to a retailer last week who said they had the strongest fall ammonia application that they've seen in the Midwest uh, ever. And I think looking at you know, global stock to use ratios for grains. Uh, we just finished our market outlook conference in New Orleans yesterday. Everyone is expecting demand to remain high as we go into the spring planting season as well, but hopefully with uh, a little more stability. Now, just to be clear for growers that may be thinking about 2018, uh, I don't know that we're going to return to that market condition, but frankly, that's not sustainable either for fertilizer companies. But no one likes volatility. It puts everyone in a lot of risk. How are the supply chains? I mean, do we have, because we do import a lot. I mean, do, are they stable? Yeah, that's a great question. That was the number two issue identified after volatility. And I, I think as you look specifically at logistics, that, you know, 55% of the people that responded said that rail uh, was their number one concern, rail service. So we had two surface transportation board members that commented that they felt like anecdotally rail service was improving. We rely uh, heavily on those class one railroads who have all transitioned into new CEOs recently. So I think that's culturally had an impact. Uh, but equally as important as the, are the waterways and just ensuring that we have water in the river so that as that grain comes out, uh, fertilizer can go back up. Um, for the most part, the geopolitical situation and some of the supply uh, shifts have occurred. We had a, we had a, a situation where vessel, a vessel of UAN uh, was going to, to Europe being reloaded with Russian UAN and coming back to the U.S. Uh, that's how crazy some of these supply chains have shifted. Russia set an, uh, a record last year, record number of fertilizer exports. So they have found a place, they have found a home. And, you know, we were looking at Israel now, barring no major other geopolitical issue. Hopefully we'll have a, a, a stable spring. Talking with uh, Corey Rosenbush, president and CEO of the Fertilizer Institute. Farm bill, how, how important is the farm bill? Well, it's important because growers have to be successful. And so first and foremost, having that extension approved this week is going to be huge as they go into spring planting. Uh, for the Fertilizer Institute specifically, you know, we learned that 90% of all fertilizers are consumed outside the United States. We are a net importer of fertilizer. 93% of our potash uh, is imported. And so what we've asked Congress to consider is policies that help bolster domestic supply, just to offer some some buffer to the geopolitical situation we've experienced. Um, that includes designating phosphate and potash as a critical mineral uh, so that it expedites permitting to increase supply. So for example, one phosphate company uh, just got their permit to open a new mine. It took 10 years and $32 million. These aren't just spigots you can turn on, and we need policy that helps promote domestic supply. That is uh, Corey Rosenbush with the Fertilizer Institutes. We are at uh, the NAFB convention. I'm Brian Winnikins for WRDN.